Hello, welcome to NETVN channel. In this video I show you how to create a file server for small and medium companies. The operating system used is Windows Server and it is applicable to most versions of Windows Server operating system. First of all I set up a static app address for the server. In this example the server IP address is 192.168.1254. After setting the static app address I changed the server name. In this example the server name is SV1, which will be used later in this video. You will be asked to restart the server after renaming. Next I installed some more things for the server. The purpose I will turn the server into a domain controller. Then make it a file server. And for easier resource management, I install additional file server resource manager. Upgrading a server to a domain controller requires domain configuration. You set up the domain according to your company or organization. Set recovery password. Then follow the steps above to complete the setup. The server will automatically restart and join the newly created domain. My server has been upgraded to a domain controller. You will see the IP address will be changed so I will edit it. I set the DNS address to be the server's IP address. Next you set up DNS as above for the server. The purpose is the mapping between IP address and host name. Specifically in this video we'll map between IP address 192.168.1254 and host name is SV1. Use command prompt to check DNS settings. That's it, DNS has been set up for the server. To divide resources for everyone in your company, divide them into organizational units, groups, and users. Then create accounts for each person. 
Everyone will be in a certain group. In this example, I add a new organizational unit named New York. Next, I created two more groups named IT and Sale. The IT team has two members, John and Jennifer. Members of the IT group cannot access the data of the sales group and vice versa. Next I set up sharing of the servers hosting resources for the groups and their members. The server has two hard drives, one of which stores the Windows operating system. The remaining hard drive is used to store data of IT and sales groups. This is a new unpartitioned hard drive so I initialized and partitioned it. I formatted it as NTFS and named it Storage. Next I set up shared hosting as above. I choose Partition D to share for IT and sales groups. This is the path for users to access the shared folder. You set it up so that users who don't have permissions to the folder won't discover the folder over the network. Having set up sharing, next I create folders for each group. In the folder named data I create a new folder IT and folder sale. For the folder named IT I set the edit permission to the IT group. So John and Jennifer have edit rights to this folder. Sales group members do not have permission to access the data of the folder named IT. Similar to the folder named Sale. John and Jennifer cannot access the folder named Sale. This protects the privacy of groups within the same company or organization. In addition, it also makes data management easier. Next I will introduce one advantage when deploying domain. 
The IT folder will automatically map to the computers of the members of the IT group. You don't need to create a network drive map on the client side, it will automatically generate the corresponding username. To do that, you create a new group policy as above. User Configuration Preferences Windows Settings Drive Maps New Next you set the path, choose the character for the drive. Reconnect. You update the settings with the above command. Time to check the basic settings. From a client I joined the domain. If you want to join a domain, you need to set up a static app address for it. You set the DNS IP address to be the server's IP address. 192.168.1254 After setting up a static IP address, I join the domain as above. I used John's account to join domain. You will be asked to restart your widow's computer to ensure successful domain join. You now use John's username and password to log into your computer and join the domain. Something interesting is about to happen. Your computer will appear a new drive. So your file server is up and running. John can create new files and upload files to the server. It's bad if John uploads a lot of large files and takes up all of the server's resources. That's undesirable so I'll set a limit for groups. There are several limit templates for you to use. You use one of them or create a new one if you want. Here I will use an existing template and set it up for the IT group. Jennifer and John can only upload up to 10 gigabytes of data. Next I will prevent them from uploading multimedia files like audio and video.
I also prevent them from uploading executables against a folder called IT. You set a limit for the folder named sale if you want. As you can see the drive has only 10 gigabytes capacity just like the limit I set up. Here I have introduced the basic steps to create a file server for small organization. I set up a report for a folder called data to monitor the server's resources. Thanks to the report, you will know how much storage resources are used by teams and plan to upgrade if resources are running low. I want to get the report twice in a week. I then edited the DNS settings to make sure the clients could access the internet. Thus I have introduced the basic steps for you to create a file server for small company. From here you will have advanced steps to deploy the server for your company. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.